Okay, day 10 of your revision with me, Mr. Blom. You're going to get, you need a pencil and paper. You need to be following through, doing the questions. If you are doing the questions by yourself, it's important to watch the me calculate the answers as well. Uh, or you could go through it with us. When I write, you write. Nice and simple. 500 plus what plus 1 equals 521. Okay, so we've got a missing number there. We want to split up all the place values, the 500s, the two tw tens, and the one zero. So we're going to go 500 plus, and then two tens is 20, plus one. We've given 500, we've given one, so what, what's missing is the 20. So the answer is 20. 357 plus eight, you can count your fingers. 358, 359, 360. 361, 362, 363, 364, 365. Eight fingers up to 365. The answer is 365. You could do the column method. 357 plus 8. 7 plus 8 is 15. Add 1. 5 plus 1 is 6. And 3. So 365. Or you can use the number line, which is my preferred when you're looking at early year 3 and year 4. Stuff like that is we start off at 357, we do a jump. What's the next number to get to? I think 360 is a really good number to get to, and it's not going to be too much, because we're adding three. How much do we need to add to make another, another? Uh, how much do we need to add to make eight? We need to add five, so we add another five, and that makes it 365. So 365 is the answer, I did it in three different ways. 100 minus 54, so you've got 100, take away 54. 0 minus 4, can we do 0 minus 4? If I have 0 sweets, can someone take 4 sweets away from me? No. However, I can't borrow from here, which is disastrous. We don't, but we don't give up. We keep going down the place values until we can borrow one. So the tens column needs to borrow from the hundreds column. So the tens column says, can I please have something? He goes, yes, of course you can. I'm really friendly. And now he's got 10 tens because 100 is 10 tens. So now can I borrow from the tens? Yes, I can. 10 becomes 9. And that becomes 10. 10 minus 4 is 6. 9 minus 5 is 4. And the answer is 46. Um, what could work doing subtraction? Maybe a little bit difficult for year 3. Uh, but your number ones to 100. If you've got good number ones to 100, you'll be able to find that straight away. 4 times 4. 4, 8, 12, 16. 16. There you go. The answer is 16. 4, 8, 12, 16. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 4 is also 4 squared. 16 divided by 4. I'm going to use my rucksack. What rucksack? I'm thinking about the rucksack method. I'm just looking at my, my, the bag method. So divided by 4, I'm going to divide 16 to 4 bags. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 1 in each until I've got 16. So 1 there, 1 there, 1 there, and 1 there. So I've got 4. I need 16. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So they're all going perfectly. How many on each bag? Four. Good. Let's move on to the next, the next five. What plus 700 plus 4 equals 4704? Let's again separate these all out. 4,000. Let's go 700. Let's go zero plus four. What have we what are, what are we given in the question? We're given seven hundred, we're given four. Zero means nothing. So therefore, it is just four thousand as the answer missing one. Next question. If I remember how to clear the annotations. Uh, forty five plus thirty two plus fifty one. There's two ways you can do this. You can do it all in one go. You can add them you, you know, all in one go using that, that method, the column method, or you could add one at a time. So 45 plus 32 is equal to 7, 7, 77, and then I do 77 add 51, and then I get 80, eight, sorry, 8, <laughs> I get 7 plus 1 is 8, so, uh, 7 plus 5 is 12, 128. So as you can see, I've done them separately, and it doesn't really matter which order you can do it in. Or you can just do them all at once. 5 plus 2 plus 1 is 8. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 5 is 12. And you get 128 there. So there's two different ways you can do it there. Uh, 1,200, 
37, 1,237. Reduced is subtract. When you reduce something, uh, you probably see this in food, uh, food markets where they say, oh, this has been reduced from five pounds to four pounds. That means it's got less. So we're gonna reduce 1,237 by 563. Seven minus three is four. And then you've got 13 minus six is seven. And then you've got, you've got one minus five, you can't do one minus five. So you're gonna borrow from this over here. That's gonna become 11 minus five which is six, and then that is zero. So the answer is 674. Okay, one minus five, I can't have one thing and then have five of that taken away from me, but you can't. Unless it's a negative number, unless it's temperature or something like that. But not in this case, because 1,237 is a larger number. 64 times three. We have 64 and we're timesing. We're multiplying by three. We're gonna multiply by the four, and then we're gonna multiply by the 60. Three, uh, four times three is 12. The 10 goes to the next column. Six times three is 18. Six, 12, 18 plus one is 19. So the answer is 192. And then you can share eight, nine, six by uh, four. Four goes into eight twice. There's nothing left over. So it's just gonna be four into nine. Four goes into nine twice as well, four, eight. Now. There's one left over, so it's gonna go here, and four into 16 goes four times, as we did earlier with four times four. I'm gonna quickly just go over 64 times three again using the grid method. I'm not sure how, no, I'm not gonna create grid, actually create grids. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I'm gonna put 64, so we're gonna split 64 into 60 and four, and then we're gonna put times it by three here. So in this block over here and in this block over here, I'm gonna answer the questions. And then I'm going to add them together. 3 times 60, 6, 12, 18. So it's 180. And 3 times 4 is 12. And then you add them together. So that's the way you can do it using the grid method as well. Um, 192. Hopefully you got 192 earlier. Um, I believe we did. If not, you tell me off when you get back to school. Um, so that's the first 10. We're now on to the, the last 10. The upper key stage 2 kind of questions. Again, we've got decimal numbers and we're looking to find what decimal, what decimal, no, not, not what decimal, what values are missing. So as you can see, 99, as you can see, 30. So the missing value is two. That's nice and simple to start. We're gonna add 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. We're gonna add it three times. So there's different ways in which you can do this. You can either literally do what it tells you to do, which is add them together. Uh, which is 5, 10, 15, and then that's 7. You can't just answer it like that. We have to put a decimal point in there, 0 0.75. Or you could do 0 0.25 times 3. Because as you can see, there are three 0 0.25s. There are three times 0 0.25s. Uh, I'm just going to put a decimal point in there. Uh, five. I'm not, I, I shouldn't be putting the 0 in it, but I know it's going to be a 0. Uh, 5 times 3 is 15. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7, so it'll be 0 0.75. So the answers are going to be the same. Uh, a larger number here of subtraction. 3, 2, 5, 4, 5. 4, 3, 5, 8. 5 minus 8 you can't do, so we need to borrow from here. That becomes 3. 15 minus 8 is 7. 3 minus 5 you can't do, so you're going to borrow from here. That becomes 13. 13 minus 5 is 8. 4 minus 3 is 1. We can do that. 2 minus 4 we can't, so that becomes 2, and that becomes 12. 12 minus 4 becomes 8, so 8, 1, 8, 7 is the answer. So I'm going to check. It's 2, 8, 1, 7, because I didn't put the 2 there. 2, 8, 1, 2, 8, 1, 8, 7 is the answer. Not... 8187 because I forgot the two that to bring it down from the 10,000 value. Um, and then we got 4872 times 5. We're going to multiply into each of these place values and then find the answer. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 7 is 35 plus 1 is 36. 3 left over from the 30. Not 3 left over, but 3 brought forward. 8 times 5 is 40. 40 plus 3 is 43. 
Uh, five times four is 20 plus four, it's 24. So you've got 24,360, and that is the correct answer. Woohoo, got that one right. Uh, and then how many 50s are there in 540? Again, 450. I think this is this is where straight away you kind of stop listening or if you're struggling because you're not able to access why what's happening. So it's saying how many 50s can fit into 450. So we have to find out what the operation is. Are there going to be more or less numbers? Well, it's not going to be that many because it's how many 450s can fit into 455. It's going to be 450. I keep saying the different number, 450, which is going to be a lesser number. So it's not going to be subtraction because it's not going to be 450 uh, take away 50. So it's going to be divide because we're, we're, uh, we're, we're sharing 50. We're saying how many 50s are in 450. 450 is being shared because there's different, there's uh, an amount of 50s that are within that 450. There's different ways you can do this. You can do it the usual way, which is say 50 divided by, well, 450 divided by 50. And then you can say, uh, 50 goes into 45 and can't, so you're going to have to go do the times tables. I would say this is the worst way you can do it because you're going to have to literally start counting that into 450. So for me, that's not the way to go. Um, so not just happen there. That's not the way to go. What is the way to go is understanding that when we do this question, I don't know if you remember this from when we did a question on this in year five very recently, was that when you're dividing... This is look, This looks like 50, 45 times 10, and this looks like 5 times 10. And if you say 10 divided by 10, the answer is 1. So when I do 45 divided by 5, then t uh, divided by uh, 1, 45 divided by 5, is nine, nine divided by one, how many, nine divided by one is nine. So therefore, is it not then the same as saying 45 divided by five? Because it doesn't make a difference because these tens end up canceling each other out when they are divided by each other. So the I just wanted to explain why you do this. So this is the rule. I've just explained why you do the rule. I don't like you just doing the rule for no reason. So that is why when you do this calculation and you've got zeros on the end of each number, you cancel out the zeros on the end of each of the numbers because you are understanding that you can divide both numbers by 10. Dividing both numbers by 10. If you divide both numbers by 10, they cancel each other out, they become one in, the one in the number one. And then when you, when you get the number one, you're either multiplying or dividing number one anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. So that's why then you can have yourself 45 divided by five, which you should know is uh, 45 is in the five times table. How do we know this? Because every number in the five times table ends in five or zero. So it's very important to know. I hope we get a couple of more of those when we do the um, when you do these in the future. <clears throat> Last couple. Again, we have one of these missing number questions. I'm just gonna write it on the question over here. Do we have uh, 0 0.1? Yes, we do, so I'm just gonna get rid of the 0 0.1. Do we have one? Yes. So the missing number is 1,000. Okay. Number 17, the, to the total of 56,793 and nine. So the total is just adding, them to, adding the two together. I think this is meant to trick you out. And if you've done this before, if you tried this before looking at how I explained this, I bet you might have done division or multiplication because you saw that the number had like a division like quality or multiplication like quality to it because you're calculating by a smaller number. But actually, if it's just the total, uh, 56793, five, we're just adding the 9 to the number, which makes 12. That makes 10, that makes 8, 6, 5, 5, 6, 8, 0, 2. Oh, it is, it, is, it is what you're supposed to do. Okay, so literally just adding 9 there. 1055 less than 3000. We take 3000 and we want to have 1055 less. So we're going to subtract 1055. We can't do 0 minus 5. We can't take from the 10s. We can't take from the 100s. So we need to borrow from this 2000 over here. That becomes ten thousands. 
So we need to borrow it to make that 900. We now have 10 tens, make that nine. 10 minus five is five, nine minus five is four, nine minus zero is zero, two minus one is one. One, zero, four. I got that wrong, because nine minus zero is nine. My apologies. See, we make mistakes. Nine minus zero is nine, and you get one, nine, four, five. It's like a date, 1945. Uh, one, nine, four, five, apologies there. Nine minus zero is not zero, it is nine. Okay. And then we've got 324 times 20. Oh, 324 times 20. I'm going to go how I recommend you do this. Again, it's about splitting up and not just relying on using the column method. You are going to use the column method, but this is just going to be a little bit easier for you. 20 is 2 times 10. Okay, when you, when you partition, you can multiply two numbers together to make the number, and that will be, be the partition number. So we're going to multiply by 2 and then by 10 because when you multiply by 10 you're essentially adding a 0 to the end of the number I don't like saying that but it's just you're adding a, a place value to the end of the number so we're going to do 324 times 2 which is 8 2 times 2 is 4 3 times 2 is 6 and then we're going to multiply it by 10 which makes it 6 4 8 0 let me check this one because I've got one wrong before got that one right and then we're going to share 4.2 between 6. Ah, okay. This is an interesting one. So we've got 6 divided by 4.2. You can use the column method for this. The thing is, you could, uh, not column method, the bustle method, you, you, could, you could do this in your head. Okay, so when you're dividing and multiplying, you're understanding how many, pla how many decimal places are in the number, and then you're going to do it. So you could just do it normally. 6 goes into 42. I'm sure you know the six, uh, 42 is in the, in the 6 times table. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42 is 7. But that's not the answer because that's 42 divided by 6, not 4.2. There's one decimal point in 4.2, so we're going to make it one decimal point here. We can't put nothing into this column here because this is the unit column. The unit column always has an amount in there. So it's going to be 0 0.7. Let me try it. Yep, yeah, 0 0.7. And that's the answers for all of them. Here you can press pause and you can like mark yourself again. But like I said, you need to be really careful. Uh, in not just relying on doing it and finding the answers. It's good to listen to myself and Mr. Saw uh, going through the answers so that you can have a really good understanding of your maths. See you next time.